Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria, and um, as you know, a few weeks ago I visited a show at the Weald and Download Museum to meet up with um, Zach Evans and the other members of Destria and to see their show and to interview Zach. Um, look in my previous videos if you haven't seen that one already. But one of the other things going on at the show was a group known as the Pastons who work with Destria and they provide essentially the foot soldiers um, for, for the whole sort of reenactment um, uh, show presentation as it were. Uh, we're giving a, a really interesting demonstration looking at 15th century firearms. Now firearms are obviously something that most people associate with the 16th century and later but the 15th century is when we start to see hand-held firearms start to come onto the battlefield, particularly in the later part of the of the 15th century, but really from the Wars of the Roses kind of period. So we're looking at the kind of 1460s and 70s through to 1500, we see an increasing use of the use of um, gunpowder on the battlefield. And of course, we could say that really this is one of the things that spelled the end in the middle of the 15th century of the English dominance um, in France during the Hundred Years' War. And the French really embraced the use of gunpowder, particularly um, field artillery, essentially. Um, they embraced the use of it uh, in, in warfare, while the English army did make use of gunpowder, but probably a little bit behind the curve and uh, relied on their longbowmen and, and knights and the, the, the sort of the way that they'd fought for the previous hundred years. And the French were quicker to move on and move into a more, let's say, Renaissance way of warfare. Um, and that ultimately is why the French won the Hundred Years' War. But anyway, so what you're going to see now is a, most of a presentation given um, at the Wealdon Downland um, uh, Living History show of the use of 15th century handguns, and that doesn't mean pistols, that means handheld guns, a bit like mini cannons essentially, the, the precursor to the, to the arquebus and the musket. I hope you enjoy it. Cheers folks. Yeah, that's about 30 grams of powder, so I'm going to move away a little bit. <laughs> Ready when you are? <laughs> You'll see it's a bit difficult to set off, it's not as volatile as you might imagine. So Liam's putting a burning match in there, get a little mushroom bag, no bang notice. That's because it's not in a confined space. So, with the pe developments in powder technology, we get something that resembles a modern gun. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So we're going to let off a single shot and then I'll show you um, how we actually go about the process of loading the gun. So I'm getting out the one. They are a gun, so there is going to be a loud bang. So if you are of a nervous disposition, maybe move away. But they're not frighteningly loud, it's not like a cannon. Okay, so that's our gun. So I'm going to bring forward a gunner now. And uh, I'm going to bring William Marshall forward. And he's going to go through the process of loading the gun. So, first of all, we obviously need the charge. So the charge is um, black powder. We actually load these out of little plastic uh, paper um, cartridges that we make up. So you see uh, William there biting the top off the paper cartridge, pours the powder in, about 10 grams of uh, black powder going in these guns. He then puts the paper from the cartridge in the barrel and forces that down. And then he's going to put a bit of extra wad in it. Now we actually use tea bags, believe it or not, being very English. We're not using a, a ball because obviously that ball would go far enough to kill some of you and we wouldn't be invited back. So the tea bags go in as uh, wadding. Then he's primed the pan so he's ready to fire. So there's a pan on top of the gun around about here and that's filled with a finer powder that goes down the barrel and it's literally a hole through to the barrel so so William's ready to fire no ball you'll notice because we don't want to kill anyone and there we go there goes the gun so the reason we use tea bags rather than anything else is because they don't burn particularly readily but they are biodegradable so we've got a uh, an environmental conscience so our gun is ready to fire so we'll have one more volley going off Oh, 
So you'll notice there that most of our gunners are actually touching the powder off with a match. Now these guns do have a lock mechanism, they do have a trigger, um, but most of our gunners don't actually use them. Now what they've got is, um, most have a kind of serpentine lock, so there's an S-shaped lever, the burning match goes in one end, and you pull the trigger and it brings that burning match down onto the flash pan. The reason we don't tend to use those mechanisms is by the time you've loaded, the match has burnt a little bit, it doesn't line up. But they are quite use useful for an aimed shot. So, we're going to show you how our gunners work. You may have seen, uh, been to a battle reenactment before that had gunners as part of it. Um, and they probably came out in a floppy hat and a shirt, a uh, little bit bow-legged, let off a shot, didn't do anything to the opposition, and they moved on. Well, actually, our 15th century gunner was a quite professional soldier. So if we take uh, William Marshall here, standing in front of me, you'll notice he's wearing armour on his body. He's covered in metal plates, uh, which are actually covered by fabric. And this is called a brigandine. That's a very, very effective bit of armour. He's also got armour on his arms, but nothing on his legs. And this means that he's protected, but he's able to move quite quickly. And he's going to send forward um, some of his men in skirmish order. OK, skirmish order! Two on my left! Advance! So you'll see these guys are quite mobile. They're moving forward in what we call skirmish order. So we're giving covering fire. You'll notice that on the left we've got working as a pair, one loading, one moving forward, while they're getting supporting fire from the line. They're reloading at the moment. And this means that they're quite a mobile unit. And the reason they're so mobile, they don't just stand in one place and shoot, it's because the actual real lethal effective range against armour from these guns is probably about 40 metres, which isn't very far. So they need to get close to the enemy. And then they need to shoot and they need to be able to get away. So they're wearing armour because they do get close enough to get caught by the enemy. And these guys would all be trained fighters as well. So you can see Sir William moving forward as well. Another shot fired. And when they get to the end, they'll form up as an, a second unit. So you see young Michael moving forward, taking a knee, discharging. I think we might get one more shot off before they're too close. It's William loading now. Moves forward, and this will be his final shot. Okay, so that's our skirmish order, and this is kind of how handgunners were used in the 15th century. You may be familiar with um, the massed volley fire that comes in later centuries. This didn't really come about until sort of 1540. So it took them a while to figure out that actually they weren't very accurate. So moving forward, they can get a reasonable rate of fire. And while um, Sir William's up the other end, what I'll ask him to do is I'll ask him to demonstrate the rate of fire. So Sir William steps forward once he's loaded. So can I have a, a volunteer with a, with a watch from the audience, please? Someone over here? All right, I've got a volunteer over here. Can you time a minute for me from the first shot that goes off? Right, so as soon as you get down, that's the first shot, you let me know when a minute's up. Right, okay, so count the shots. That's our first shot from William there. Now, you can expect um, an archer of the period to get about probably 16 shots off in a minute. So we'll see what Sir William does here. Sorry, Sir William. I think I've promoted it. So that's two. So he's frantically loading here. So it's not bad rate of fire, but remember 16 in a minute for an archer. So I don't think we're going to achieve anywhere near that. 
but there is an advantage to, to the gun. The actual effective legal range of an archer was greater as well. But one of the beauties of the gun is you can pretty much train any idiot to use one, and that's what I've done here, really. <laughs> Hold, that's our minute. So what was that, four? Four shots, so his personal best is five, so he's not doing too badly. But the gun is effective because, like I say, we can train any idiot to do it, whereas a, a professional archer would have spent years in training. The other advantage to the gun is it packs a much bigger punch. By the 15th century, quality armour is actually damn near arrow-proof. There's not a lot you can do against it. But the gun will punch a hole through armour if you can get close enough. So like I say, you want to be within sort of 40 metres maximum and uh, shoot in an almost point blank range because they're, they're wildly inaccurate. So, we're going to have a little bit of an exchange of fire between our two gun groups now. So, are you ready gentlemen? Okay, so we'll have an exchange of fire. So you can see lots of noise and then silence as they frantically try and reload. So Sir William is actually our, our quickest loader, so he's getting his second shot off first. <laughs> Oh, Lots of frantic ramming going on. So, you'll notice that no one's fallen over. I did say these guns were ridiculously inaccurate, and I've just seen um, Leon down there with the red helmet has had a misfire. So, that is, he's had a pass in the pan. The, the powder in the flash pan's gone off, but it hasn't discharged. And there we go, we're clear and safe there. Okay, so we'll have one more volley. This <laughs> so will you ready to start? Right, last volley on this side, please. Right, if I can ask William Marshall's group to reload and stand ready. Right, clear your guns when ready. Okay, so we said that these, um, these guns are primarily used in a kind of almost like a shock troop fashion against heavily armoured men. So I'm going to bring a heavily armoured man out now. So uh, this is Lord Barclay, wearing typical English armour of the period, so he looks very pretty and shiny. And um, what he doesn't realise is he's volunteered to be shot at. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I didn't explain myself very clearly earlier. So, um, we're approximately, what, about 100 metres away, would you say? Okay, so I said the lethal range of these guns is around about 40 metres. So, what we've got to do is we need to see if a man in armour can close this range quick enough that he can actually engage the gunners before they can actually reload and fire at him. So if you think the midway point is probably where the white flag is maybe. Um, so once he gets to that point he's probably in lethal range. You could expect at this range bullets to bounce off this top quality armour. So are our gunners ready? So on our first shot Lord Barclay from this nice safe distance is going to try and close the gap before they can reload and get a shot off. 
Are we ready, Janice? So Lord Barkley will start when the first shot goes off. So he's trying to close the distance. Notice he's not running. He doesn't want to be too exhausted when he gets there. He's in lethal range now. Can our gunners get a second shot off? Getting pretty close. You'll notice the gunners are moving away. Taking some shots, but you will be feeling these. Oh, he's still standing though. Oh, it looks like he's coming back. He's not keen on this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So you can see, the sword is no match for the gun. He did cover the distance, um, but they did just about get that shot off. If he'd have run, maybe he could have got there a little bit quicker, but it's a little bit hot to be running in armour, I've got to say. So, we're going to reform our gunners. Should we make Lord Barkley run back? Come on, Lord Barkley. Armour's not heavy, we all know this. Let's get a little job on. No, he's not fit. Terribly unfit man, really. Not the fighting man you would expect under all that armour. Right, so, we did um, that skirmish fire earlier. Now, after a while, they do figure out that guns are wildly inaccurate, and they do say that if you were shot, the guy wasn't aiming at you. So what they do is eventually they develop this, uh, this kind of mass volley fire, which is what we all know from, from later periods. So we're going to do a little demonstration of a, a mass volley fire. So our gunners are all loaded, I believe. Oh. One priming still? Okay, so they're ready. So, in close order, they're all going to discharge a simultaneous volley. Yeah, okay. Right, so our gunners are ready. Uh, simultaneous first, I think. Right, simultaneous volley on me! Have a chance! Rio! So, anyone coming into that could expect to be hit. It doesn't really matter who you aim at, as long as you point in the general direction of the approaching um, soldiers, chances are you're going to hit someone. Leon there, a little bit later than everybody else, hasn't quite got the idea of simultaneous fire. So we're now going to do another top file, which is uh, a rolling volley. Looking at the uh, rate that Leon is loading here, it's probably going to be a, a rolling volley with a little bit of a gap in the middle. Yeah, when you're ready. Rolling volley from the left, Michael! So what happened there, Leon? Blaming the match, look. Says his match went out. So this will be our last shot, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right this time. Very good. Okay, so that's our demonstration of gunnery. Now we did say that um, our gunners would be trained to fight. So we've got our professional soldiers over at our encampment, which is opposite the, um, opposite the main square. And we will be doing 
a demonstration of 15th century foot combat and looking at those European martial arts. Okay, so if you'd like to join us for that, just swing by. It's going on through the day. Um, and thank you all for watching. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We've got extra videos on Patreon, t-shirts on Spreadshirt, and I hope to see you for the next video.